Could you talk a little bit more about King's relationship with Coretta Scott King, as well as his role as a father? I think from the beginning of his relationship with Coretta Scott, he understood that she was a very um, unique um, partner in that um, he was obviously in love for the typical reasons that uh, she was uh, attractive, she was uh, someone who um, he, he felt he was compatible with, but he also felt that their politics were compatible, that they both wanted to bring change to the, uh, to the South. They both had a broad vision of social justice, which extended beyond civil rights. Um, both of them felt that it was necessary to, um, uh, to bring economic justice to the country. They, they talked about socialism and other, other kinds of radical ideas uh, when, they were, when they were dating. And you, you can see that in the letters they wrote to each other. Uh, so that when the Montgomery bus boycott started, she was a supportive partner from the beginning. I think looking back, you can see that um, Martin Luther King was somewhat sexist in his attitudes and about um, her role, and I think there was some tension over, over that. I think she would have probably preferred to be more active, but once they started their family, then um, she was the one who stayed at home while he was the one who played a more um, upfront role in the movement, at least until the um, early 60s, when she took the lead on, on speaking out against the Vietnam War. She was involved in um, uh, Women's International Strike for Peace. And, and, and at that time, Martin Luther King did not want to speak out on the war because he, he felt that that would harm his position as a civil rights leader. Uh, so she often spoke his thoughts that he might have thought, um, expressed in public um, long before 1967 when King took a public stand um, in his speech at the Riverside Church in New York. Now, with respect to the family, as the, the children got to the point where they could travel with the, their parents, um, for example, in the Chicago campaign in 1966, uh, Coretta insisted that the family come with him when he moved into a ghetto in Chicago. Uh, you know, the kids uh, were with them, and uh, from actually from the point from the Selma to Montgomery march on, you often see pictures of Martin and Coretta marching together at the at the head of uh, protest campaigns, and uh, this this continues until the end of his life. And indeed, when he goes to, to Memphis and he's assassinated um, during the sanitation workers' strike, it is Coretta who insists that she and the kids come to Memphis after his assassination and make sure that the, the march takes place there. Uh, so, uh, and, you know, uh, later on when I uh, got to know her, I think it was quite clear that in some ways, after his, after his death, she came into her own as, as a leader. She no longer um, had to play a subordinate role. Um, by that time, the kids were old enough so that she could take a, a major role in um, disseminating a lot of ideas about uh, civil rights, um, feminism, uh, her anti-war stance. Um, later on, she became a proponent of, of gay rights um, and many other issues. In fact, <laughs> in fact, uh, there would be no Martin Luther King holiday except for the, um, uh, the role of, of Coretta Scott King and uh, promoting the idea of a King holiday.